Now the app looks good, but we have zero functionality. So if we click on this, nothing happens. We click on those buttons, nothing happens. So what I want to do is to have the model come up every time we click on one of those buttons. So if they click on add employee, I want this model to come up or a pop-up layer or pop-up window to come up with a form where they can put in the employee information and then two buttons at the bottom of that form, one to save or one to close to or to cancel. And I want the same for the edit. So when they click on edit, I want a, a pop-up window to come up and that pop-up window should be pre-filled with the existing employee information and then they can edit it and then save. And when they click on the X here or delete, I want a pop-up layer to come up again or a model and they can either delete or cancel. So as you can see, those three functionalities are very similar. The models are going to be different or the layers are going to be different, but all of the three functionalities are the same. So if we go back to the template and I'm going to close this for now, I'm going to scroll up a little bit. So we have this button here to add an employee. And this right here is the list of all of the employee with the cards. So we're not going to do anything there, but down here we have the two buttons. So as you can see here, we have the, um, pencil button, button with the pencil icon and the other one to delete. So we have the edit and the delete buttons right here. So we can create a function that can take care of that for us. We can create a function that every time we click it, we pass in some parameters that tells which model to open. So we can create one function that can open all three of the models. So as you can see, we have the add model here. I'm just going to collapse it. And then we have the edit model here. I'm going to collapse it. And then we have the delete model here. I'm going to collapse it. And this is the notification that you're seeing, which we're going to only display when there is absolutely no employees to show. So we have to add those functionalities so that we can have a working application. So I'm going to go back to Bootstrap and I'm just going to click on Bootstrap 4. I think that's the one that um, this guy is using for this template. So I'm going to close those for now because I don't need them. And I'm going to search for a modal. I need to understand how this thing works. So if we scroll down a little bit, you see an example here. And what I'm interested in is this button right here. So you can have a button to launch them. So if you see, I can click it and then it comes up. Okay. So we have the models already. So we have those lines of code already in the application. We just need to have this button here. Now there's two ways, at least I know you can approach this. You can either have those buttons um, and then you call this button and then click them, or you can do everything programmatically. So in my case, I'm going to do everything programmatically. So as you can see here, we need to have this button here. The type has to be a button. And then we don't care about this class because we're not going to display this button. And then we need to give it a data toggle, which is going to be model. We need to give it a data target, which is going to be the ID of the model itself, as you can see here, or modal, or however this is pronounced. So we can programmatically create a button and depending on what button they click on the UI. So either add employee or edit or delete, we pass in this ID to that uh, function and then they can call the proper model. So as just so I can use this for an example, uh, I'm just going to show you how we can do this in a programmatic way. I'm going to go back to the ETS file and then right down below here, I'm going to create a new method. So I'm going to do public and I'm going to call it on open model. And what I want to pass is employee. So I'm going to pass in the employee. So, so that would be the employee that they're either adding or editing or deleting. And I want to pass a mode and that's going to be a string. So what the mode is going to tell me is what exactly the user is trying to do. So that will help me determine which model or model to open. So if the mode is um, add employee, for example, then we're going to open the add employee model. If it's edit, we're going to open edit, etc. So this function is not going to return anything. So I'm going to pass in void as the return type and then open and close curly braces. So the first thing I want to do is create the button. So I'm going to do const button and I'm going to say document that create element and we're going to pass in the name of the element that we wanted to create in that case it's going to be a button so we have the button created so this is um this button right here okay so it's going to create this button right here we don't have those attributes yet like the data toggle and the data target we're going to add those in a minute so we created the button so we have to change the type to a button because by default when we create a button, the type is, is submit and we're not going to use this button for any submission. So we have to change the type on that button. So down below, we're going to do button that type and we're going to set that to a string that's going to be 
button. Okay, so we change the type from submit, which is the default, to button. And since we're, since we're not gonna display this button, I can also set some styling to display none. So I can do button, oops, that style, and I can access the display, oops, as you can see it comes up here, and then I can set that equal to none. And you know, if you know a little bit of CSS, you know this is just gonna hide it in the UI because we don't need to show that button. Um, we already have uh, our button, like those buttons right here and this link right here to um, to call and then open the modal. So we don't need this. We don't need to show this button anywhere on the UI. So that's why I'm displaying. Uh, I set the display to none. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit. So let me go back and let's see what I wanna do next. So what I wanna do next is to add this attribute, which is the data toggle, which is gonna be model. So that's going to be model for every single one of them. So we don't need to change that. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to go down. I'm going to say for this button, I want to add some attributes. So I'm going to do set attribute. And in here, I'm going to pass in the attribute that I want to add. In that case, that's going to be the data toggle. So I'm going to do data toggle. And I want to set this to modal and semicolon. So what I'm doing here is to add this to this button and I'm just doing that programmatically instead of doing it manually by just creating the button and the element. Now the data toggle, which is gonna be the ID of the model that I wanna open is gonna be dynamic. So I'm not gonna set a value for it yet. So let's go back and what I wanna do is to check what mode that the user is in, which means which one of the button that they click. So to do this, I'm gonna create an if statement. So I'm gonna do if the mode which I'm getting from my function here. I'm gonna say if this is equal to add, then I know they're trying to add an employee, then in that case, I can set a different attribute for the data target. So I'm just gonna copy this, paste it down here, and I wanna change this to data target. And that's gonna be the ID of the model that I wanna open. So let's go back to the UI. So for the first one, which is the add, I wanna add this ID right here, which is add employee uh, model. So I'm gonna copy this, go back, and then put this down here. So what I wanna do is do the same thing for every single one of the different models that I have. So I'm just gonna copy this if statement, Go down here, I'm gonna paste it. One more time, I'm gonna paste it. For the second time, I'm gonna look for edit, like if they're trying to do an edit. And the third time, I'm gonna look for a delete. So if the mode is delete, we're gonna open the delete modal, which means we're gonna pass in a different data target. So here, I'm gonna come back here and then grab this ID for the update. So as you can see, edit or update employee modal, pass this in as the data target. And for the last one, I'm gonna pass in the delete employee model, just like that. So depending on which button they click, this attribute, which is gonna be the data target, is gonna be different. And I think since this is referencing an ID, I need to put the hash sign. So I'm gonna put hash sign here and all three of them, just like that and scroll up a little bit. So now what I wanna do is to add this button somewhere in the template itself. So as we can see, the button only exists in the JavaScript or the TypeScript world here. The button is not on here. So we need to have a way to place this button somewhere here. So I'm gonna scroll up a little bit and I'm gonna give this main container, which is like the main container for the page. I'm just gonna give it an ID and I'm just gonna call it main container or something like that. Okay, so now we can grab this element and then we can add the button in this um, div right here, which is the main div of the the main page. So let's go back here, and I'm just gonna scroll up a little bit. I'm gonna create another constant. I'm gonna call it container. And I'm just gonna do document that get element by ID. And then I'm gonna pass in the ID. I'm gonna go back, just copy that ID and then paste it here. Okay, so now we have access to this this entire div right here on line 17. So now what we can do inside this div, we can just add this button. So we can go down here. 
after all the checks are done so that we know which data target to add to this button, we can come down here and then in the container, we can do append child. And then here we just pass in the button, which is this button right here that we create. Just like that. So now the button exists in this HTML template. It, it exists under DOM. And all we have to do after that is just click this button. So I can just do this button, that click. There's a click you can call on the button. As you can see here, it's coming up. And then we click the button because that's what we're trying to do. So now the button will have all of those attributes on it. And then when we click the button, um, it will open the appropriate model. So now the only thing we have to do, um, there are some scripts that we need uh, that Bootstrap needs to be able to open the model uh, with this click of a button with those data toggle and data target. So let's go back to the main file of the application, which is the index.html. This is the file that's going to be ultimately served in a browser. And then I'm just going to go down here at the bottom and then paste those uh, script. As you can see, there's just jQuery and then Popper and then bootstrap in that JS. Those are just the JS file that you need to have whenever you, uh, you're you using bootstrap and you need to have your model to come up because there's like things happening in the script and the background that's making this happen. And if you know, if you don't know where to get those, we can go back to the bootstrap and then go to get started. And you can see the here's the CSS for the styling and then here's all of the, the JS that you need. And that's what we just uh, paste it in there. As you can see, we have the jQuery, Pepper, and then Bustra. So that's exactly what we just did, uh, just right here. So I'm going to close this, and I'm going to open the terminal again. And I'm just going to save this. And now, if we click, if we add this button over to a click listener, we should be able to open either of the models. So let's go back to the template. I don't need that quite yet. And I'm going to scroll up. So here I'm going to add a click listener. So I'm going to do click. And what I want to do is call the function that I just created. So here I'm going to pass in the name of the function. And for this one, I need to pass in an employee. And since this is the open model, so I don't I don't have the employee yet because they're trying to like create a new employee. I'm going to pass in all. And for the mode, I'm just going to pass in add. I'm going to do add. OK, so that means that this is the add employee. So it's going to do all the proper logic, which is going to be here and then click the button. So let's go back. I'm just going to copy this click event listener and then go down here. So here we have the two other buttons. So to edit and then delete an employee. So I'm going to add the click listener on those link. So I'm going to put this here and then I'm going to put this here. And here I can pass in the employee because remember we're looping. So we have access to this employee here, which is the local variable that we define here. So if every time it loops, we have access to this employee that is in the current iteration of the loop. So instead of passing null, we pass in the employee here. And then here is going to be edit. And this is going to be delete, which is the string that we're looking for here. Edit, delete. So now if we save all of this, and let me make sure this is this is compiling. OK, so now if we go back and go back to the app, if I click add employee, now you can see we open the add employee model. We click on edit. We open the edit employee model. And if we click on delete, we open the delete. Obviously, this is not working yet because we haven't added all the functionalities. But that's just one way to um, do this programmatically to open different models on the screen. Another approach to this is to put those buttons like you would put three buttons on the HTML template itself. And then you would hide those button like so you would put this style display none on this button. And then you would get this button like this. So you do document get element by ID and then you call you get the button and then you can just call the click on it. So I think this is a little bit cleaner. It's more uh, agile because you have one function that will do the same thing. So you don't have to put all those unnecessary elements on the page and things like that. So I'll see you guys in the next one.